Hello, check one. Do we have you? We don't. Do we have you yet? Oh wait, that's why. Tis. Hold on, hold on. I have it muted. Holding up. Really, it's a good idea if I'm muted, probably. Yeah, you know. <laughs> That's an excellent idea. I think I remember that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Last yeah time. he's from Pennsylvania. You remember last time. Yeah. <laughs> this is a G-rated show, right? I don't even remember. Was it me or was it Tyler who, were you, did you interview these guys the first time? You did. It was just me. Yeah. Yeah. So you haven't met Oliver James. I have not met Oliver James, but. Welcome. James is my middle name, so I like him already. Oh, there you go. Yes. That's interesting. Oliver's my middle name. It's like rapport. <laughs> Instant rapport. We're just a bunch of middle names, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Better than fingers. No, <laughs> that's true. That's debatable. <laughs> so you guys just played yeah. on uh, the main stage there, correct? We did. Uh, it yes, sounded sound great. You guys actually opened up the show, which, by the way, I think is the most noble thing that anybody can do. Someone has to do it. Someone has to be first. It's not always the most desired spot to be, but, you know, you got to start sometime, and bless you guys for doing it. Throw us to the lions. We're used to it. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, they feed you beer, right? So it's all worth it at the yes. end. They, okay. they fed us half price beer. <laughs> that sounds even up. better. He doesn't, have a, he doesn't have his mic on, by the way. Well, no, it, was, it was good. We had a we had a great time. We got our. He's not your set. photographer. He is, oh. but he's <laughs> he's a drummer as well. He's a <laughs> multi-purpose guy, right? He's like Phil Collins. He's just doing everything. Yes. <laughs> well, welcome, welcome to the food time. It's great to be here. Yes. Did, Who did I not have? Did you um make them sign the waiver before they sat Hello? on that thing? I'm looking at the go. duct tape and going, that's got that's an OSHA yes. hazard that's for a sure. That's a crusty food time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it fell off the back of a truck and, and met the pavement at, at full force, so it go. happens. There you go. Wow, we're just speaking there loud here. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. They're oh, spicy. I think I'm peaking. I think it's about time. time. Ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Where's Kim? Kim, that's the wrong way. Yeah, that's. Kim I tried likes to, tell to go her. in through the outdoor. She likes hey, going Kim. the wrong way. <laughs> what? Whoa! Good night. Spicy Kim. I can't. I cannot get these levels right to save my life. I keep oh. turning the wrong one down. That's you have me down, that. so I feel like you're right. Try level 42. Ah, good name for a band. Oh. Where, okay, I like four, that. That's a 42. 42 joke. Wait. The answer to all okay. questions. Tyler. 40. I got a million. The on. answer to every question. It is. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Like hi. Hi. Like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I have no idea what's going on anymore. There's too many people talking for me <laughs> to get these ever? levels right. Oh, go on. Well, you could talk about whatever you want, though. That's well, what makes I it feel like since we have Oliver James in here, we should talk about Oliver James at least for a couple of minutes. Sure. Oh, you know, in between sure. your breaks. Sure. So, Is that your leg? welcome to the futon. I feel like I'm being introduced to you guys, and Big John needs to explain some stuff, or why don't we let you guys do the work? Tell All us right. a little bit about yourself, where you guys come from. Uh, I, I'm guessing you guys are here local, San Diego. We're San Diegans. Um, San Diegans. San Diegans. <laughs> The band is, uh, what does San Diego stand for? What does it mean? Saint, Saint Doug. Saint Doug. Uh, Saint, <laughs> Saint Diego. <laughs> Saint V. I Dougie. thought, I Saint thought it's an old German proverb that means a whale's vagina. Yes. 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 San, so. San Diego is German. Who it's told Germanic. San Diego. <laughs> Who knows? I heard it on TV. <laughs> I thought it came from when you drop your waffle in the sand. Right, San Diego? Oh. So I like oh. it. Don't wow. drop it. Oliver James is a thinking man's band. Yeah. Wah, wah, yeah. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> it's a think piece. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so you guys are from San Diego, obviously. North County, Maine, San Diego. Yeah. All, all over. All, all over. over. Yeah, How long thing. have you been together? The whole thing. Uh, we've uh, we've been together for about, well, there are a couple of chapters. Um, there was the period where the band was just a recording band. The prologue. Yeah, and uh, in the last 18 months or so, the band became a performing band. So uh, we are now a, a, a living, breathing entity, not just a conceptual <laughs> recording. Oh. Band, so. Big John, I'm down. Oh, I'm up. Okay. Thank what? you. Chill out. <laughs> <laughs> just keep going. I was gonna just keep shut up. Just go. Have right. you guys uh, do your thing? Have you got Have you got any records out on the market? <laughs> we do. We do. We've got um, We've got two full length albums. We've got three singles. Ooh. And uh, we're currently working on our third record, which. Uh, what did you just pull out there? Oh, vinyl. That's vinyl. I think I pulled out. And when I say vinyl. when I say record, I mean record. 180 gram, 100 percent virgin vinyl, <laughs> right? Of chasing 
the Sun How by good Oliver Burchett. That? I see it's orange like Isn't it's the sun. That's where did awesome. you get that thing? You just David Blaine it out of nowhere. Like. You don't want to know where I've been storing this, but it's still clean because it's in the wrapper. It's still in the plastic. Right. This is really cool because we're actually going to give this away Ooh. on Oliver Jones. James, why did I do that? Oh, Oliver James' episode that's coming out season seven in a few oh. weeks. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I'm really nice. proud of that. We uh, Making that is vinyl is something that we didn't oh. anticipate. I get to but. hold it. So uh, where can people get the vinyl? Is this just like a limited edition? or? Yeah, you can get it on the website, oliverjamesmusic.com. This is beautiful. Yeah. It's Oliver limited. James. There's only 300 of those. And it's 108. Yeah, I forgot to say that. It is uh, It is numbered. If you could see right here. Well, hey, Oh, it's the 27 Club. Yep. Hey, now. Yep. Oh, wait, 271. Okay, never mind. That's still, that's, <laughs> it's still, still that's a pretty good number. Yeah, one of 300. 300 like that, yeah. So. It's cool, and it's a beautiful red orange. It's almost like fire. It's a sun, is what it's it is. It's the sun, the it's setting sun. See how we did that? Chasing or the is it the rising uh, sun? Which is it? Oh, it's, uh, you're, you're just chasing it either way. Yeah. It's the sun. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on which direction you play the record, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, so we've got uh, we, that's that's our first record. Uh, our second record is called "What Have We Learned," and that came out uh, in '16. Do you answer that question on the album? Yeah. Metaphorically, yes, we do. Ooh. Yes, we do. And the answer is we haven't learned much. We, <laughs> keep, we keep stepping in. Because it. it sounds the same. No. It's, <laughs> it's a big question. It is. Because, uh, you know, depending on who you speak to, I don't think we've learned much of anything. Yeah. Well, I feel like everybody learns things every day, but the value of those things learn. Yeah. But do they yeah. stick? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Well, one stick. of the lines is looking out. While, while looking in, in. Yes. reveals who you are or what you are. Yeah. Yeah. Something like you that. Yeah, way too like deep that. for me. I well, feel you, like I you know your yeah. song so well. <laughs> in fact, the uh, Chuck, the photographer, wanted to take our picture. And he said, "Let's do some wacky stuff." And I'm like, "Man, we're not a wacky band." <laughs> no, you know, we're, we're, if you're looking, you're on out, the wrong show. In, yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> we don't do wacky well here. No, you're, you're, you guys are straight shooters. Yeah, we're a little well, too cerebral the, for Chuck, probably. The wacky is kind of a baseline. <laughs> a little too. Your free daughter, Chuck. You guys certainly take your music seriously. It sounded really good out there. Well, that's really nice of you to say. Are you guys all the original band? Yeah, this is yeah. the original live band here. That's right awesome. Here. Yes, sir. This they, is them. So that's, this is us. that's dedication these days. It is. Yeah. It is. You know, the good thing about uh, this it. band is we love the Beatles and we love drinking beer. <laughs> and those are the two criteria that you need to have. Well, to shit, be in the band. I'm out. I don't. Yeah. I you're not hate a Beatle fan, or you're not a beer fan. <laughs> I hate the Beatles. Do you really? Oh, oh, oh. Well, wow. okay. Whoa. Hold on. Are wow. you an Elvis guy? Something no, no I, you're, I'm you're actually, a Kinks guy. I'm not even an Elvis guy. Okay. He's a Rush guy. Here's the th I'm a Rush guy, but that's a whole other thing. Here's <laughs> my my on, beef with oranges. the Beatles. That, what? It is. That's, that's the point. Oranges. All right, here we go. Oranges. Okay. My beef with the Beatles is that they were nothing special, really, other than the fact that they could play a tight band as a band. They performed, they practiced, they were masters of their craft when they were found, but only because they were just like a lot of other kids that time of day, that time of year, that were busting their ass somewhere in a bar and amazing. They just happened to get picked up. Well, John, thanks for sharing. Yeah. According to the New York Post, they were actually busting their something else in the back of a the motel. Well, they were also that? really, I really that. perverted <laughs> young men. Very Beat the Beatles. If very, if you re, if you really read into their lyrics, they were very perverted so young men. Humor. Big John, who is who, who? would you put up on the pedestal? Who's your number one? A band or yeah, besides Art? Rush? I mean, Rush is Oliver a James. There you well, go. Hands yeah. down. Bada bing. Bada bing. Mm. You know, <laughs> there's this, there's this, you know, this guy named Big John who's really awesome, and he has his own music, and it's really good. So I would put him very, very far on the bottom. Heavily influenced by Oliver James. <laughs> he, he opened up for May Ride, so yes. I got to give him props for yes. that at least. Yes. So, way to go, Big John. Yes, thank Your you. Your mother thank somewhat you. appreciates you. Yes. She, wait, are you sure? <laughs> when was the last time you talked to her? Because that's not what she told me. <laughs> oh, I, I was being, I was joking, man. It was a joke. Come on, don't, don't take it. It's okay. Joke. I feel like I'm going to break this thing. Take it away from me. I don't want to. It's very valuable. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like giving a nine-year-old a gun. Like, you know, every once in a while, I'll go to eBay or Amazon and, and, and do a search for the band, and I'll see some guy that wants, like, 
75 bucks for that thing. Well, you, you used the keyword there, want. That's a yeah. steal. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's really, and that's the thing, is there's 180 gram vinyl. Like, that's not yep. low yep. grade. That's like second to low grade. Yep. So it's really good stuff. Yep. <laughs> it's really, really, it's good. It's nice, easy listening if you, you know, just want to have something on in the house. But if you also turn up the RPMs, it's like speed metal. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. So they're both bands. They're two bands in one. Hey, did you guys hear that thing? You know uh, Dolly Parton, uh, her song Jolene? No. Do you know the story? What? Mm. So Jolene, which is a classic. Yeah, I know. Not, not a country western song, but a western song. The White Stripe Tree did it. Who did you know cares? that? <laughs> Listen, I'm in, the, sorry. I'm in the middle of the story. Do sorry. they have gigantic <laughs> knockers? <laughs> if no, we <laughs> talk about Dolly. Who cares, man? If you take the 45 of Dolly Parton's Jolene and slow it down to 33 and a third, Jolene. It is Jolene. unbelievable. Jolene. How cool is that? Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's haunting, it's scary, and it's a totally different version than the Dolly Parton. Jolene, yeah. Jolene. You know, it's it's a scary, oh. you know, uh, you know, uh, like a Nick Cave. Oh. Wow. Those are Nick Cave fans. It's I have uh, no I idea I who that is. <laughs> I recommend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, See, Nick Cave? Like, it's I'm Nick like, Cave. Yeah, from the rock. Off. Nick. <laughs> I, I apologize for the diversion. But so sorry. tell us about <laughs> Swimming Horses. Yeah, you want to you want to promote the album? Uh, <laughs> we should probably let's do that. Let's do the narrative. Well, I well, want I want to ask you. I want to butt yeah, in here yeah. and ask you uh, how did you get connected to this festival? So uh, Catherine was nice enough to have us out for one of her singer songwriter performances mm -hmm. back in June. We love Kathy, and uh, we were honored and privileged to come out and, and do a Sunday with her. We played on the main stage, and uh, it went great. Uh, and after the performance, she called us over and said, you know, I, I really like what you guys are doing. I'm doing a show in September, and uh, we'd love to have you a part of that. So uh, cool. Here we are. And, uh, and we here were, you we are. We were thrilled to be a part of it. And uh, We just did the acoustic version that day. That's right. We, uh, we did uh, we, the band. Th these guys, not necessarily me, but these guys are, are very flexible, and we have a sort of an acoustic version show of what we do electronically. Electric. Are you guys gymnasts? Yes. Um, nice. Yeah, they can no. touch their toes. No. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Well, <laughs> we do tricks, but not that well. <laughs> <laughs> I got some treats. Hey, now. Hey, now. Hey, now. Hey, hey. Whoa. Oh. Hey. So, anyway. <laughs> Hi, Kim. Do you, guys, do you guys have your own studio? <laughs> yes, it's Kim's condo. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's we are. My uh, living room. We're renters at Paul's place. Yeah. Right. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And when, when you're coming up with your music, uh, give us a little bit of insight on what's going on, how, how that happens. Yeah, that's uh, you know, the process, the writing process. Uh, it's magic. You, you know, can't tell the secrets. <laughs> inspiration's a funny thing. And, uh, you know, we can go months and even longer without having a single inspiration. But when it, when it shows up, you got to take it by the horns. you got to wrestle it to the ground. And Rick, uh, our, our drummer, alluded to the fact that uh, we've got a new single out called Swimming Horses. And, uh, we got together, uh, I guess this was February, March, and uh, we were working on some stuff at uh, Paul's studio. And uh, a couple of chords came together and a lyrical idea that came together. And before we knew it, it felt right. And we ran down. We do our, our recording down at Pacific Beat in... Uh, Pacific Beach, where uh, our, our engineer Alan Sanderson's got a place, and uh, we laid it down. It took us a couple of days and some additional overdubs, but uh, you know, it was one of those things. We didn't expect to have a song come out of that session, and we started working together. We had the inspiration, we captured it, ran down and recorded it, and a couple of months later, we have it on CD. And, and before you guys take off, I, I trust you'll be here for a while. Yeah, we're going to be I, here until sundown. And, I'd, and like to, uh, yeah. I'd like to, I'd like to, to give you some stuff to take with you. But "Swimming Horses" is our our latest single. It's going it to appear out on uh, the interwebs and the social media. It's on the interwebs. Yeah. It's all over the place. It's Reverb on Spotify. It's Internet. on Apple <laughs> Music. It's on. Uh, you guys have a website. Your own website. Oliver, OliverJamesMusic.com. Super easy to remember. Super easy nice. to remember. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can hit us up there. We've got shirts. We've got. Rick, turn your hat around and show the radio audience what your hat looks like. He's wearing it backwards. It's all not that easy. He's a hipster. <laughs> <laughs> Just turn your head. Now. Just turn your head around. There we go. There's the Oliver James guy. Hey, that's, that's a, a cool pretty hat. sweet hat. But we're getting Swag. a lot of spins. And he's, uh, yeah. Good yeah. stats right now. Yeah, we're, we're number four globally on Reverb Nation. 
which is pretty cool. Wow. Number, number, right on. number one locally and regionally. Number four globally? Globally. Yeah. globally. I can almost count that on one hand. Right. That's this globe. If you weren't this like a double amputee, you, <laughs> so that's you not could count that a lot. What, that about gal- what about galactically? Well, that's number... <laughs> <You're right>. Mars <laughs> hasn't right. checked in yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we haven't seen the Martian chart yet. But, uh, <laughs> it's 4.5. Yeah, but yeah, no we're... We're making great strides. And, uh, it's so one in stuff. San Diego, one regionally, and four globally, right? And four nationally. You guys are on your way. That's great. Sick. We're right? Right. Right. Doing it the hard way. Doing it the like hard how way. many Playing. spins on Spotify right now? Yeah, well, the, the most spins that we have is with a song called The More You Love, The More You Live, which I'd like to right also on. give you guys that single. And We're getting uh, hooked up today. <laughs> that song is in, uh, it's in about 11,000 spins on I know, Spotify. Kim, come, come join us. They're giving stuff month. away. Come on. Oh, i got to get in. i got to get in on start. this. Yeah, take I Big John. Spicy, Spicy, you've got all our stuff. Did we send it to you already? Uh, yeah, I think I do, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I trust I you're listening to it every yep. day, every hour. And I love your stuff. She's got her cords tangled already. I know, I do. I'm a big, hot mess. But does John like our stuff? John wants to talk about his band, and we don't oh, want to yeah, talk about it. Apparently, oh, jo- uh, you guys are okay, but my <laughs> band rocks more mightily. <laughs> <laughs> what a great host! What about my band? <laughs> He's a prima. Yeah, when John. you're on my podcast, we'll talk about your band. <laughs> Until then, let's talk about my band. <laughs> That's right. Well, let me see. They're playing at the House of Blues in Anaheim on uh, October sixth. All right. Oh, down. oh no! Hit no, me up. I'm good to hit. Go. I'm going to be up there, but I'm going to be towards. Them. I won't be. You motherfucker. I'll be preoccupied, always. Really? I double booked myself. Oh, Damn it. Bummer, man. Bummer. So Spicy Kim is uh, uh, a music businesswoman. I am. She I does am. the biz. Uh, I have no best. musical talents at all. I'm not sure it. what it takes, but we want to <laughs> jump on your <laughs> coattails. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> man, I wish I had time to take on bands. No, no, no. And no, 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 no. Tell us. Don't give me that I'm telling time. you. Don't when did you crap. sell out? I mean, when did you buy in? When my husband was playing in a band, Seven Train, and they weren't playing out very much, and he wanted to do a little bit more, so he's like, ah play out solo acoustic and i'm like uh-uh, i could get you gigs i don't know why i thought i could but i did <laughs> and um and, and then uh, and then i did and so that's how that worked out wow. and then that's started awesome. managing him and that's perfect it was like it. i was just trying to keep tabs on how much money he was bringing in to make sure he was telling the truth <laughs> oh i know how it's much money the, he's bringing in, in. he has no idea it's in the tens of dollars it's in the tens of dollars I got dozens of dollars. Yeah. We're going to pay that gas bill, baby. <laughs> right? We're supersizing tonight. We're not going to sell any of the sheep out front. We're paying the gas bill. <laughs> We're going two-ply. <laughs> We're going two-ply. <laughs> Charmin all the way, baby. We're going two-ply. We're big. So the it's first, pillowy soft. The first album was recorded in New York. Is that right? The first album was recorded in New York. And really? Uh, the New York, Shop. New York? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. I love That's that uh, a great story. I'm not going to belabor the point. I think we told Spicy the story, but uh, we were working really hard on the first record. Mm-hmm. And uh, the uh, the brass at the studio, this is the Magic Shop, okay. came to us and said, listen, we know that you have a lockout, but we need to take a couple of days away from you. I'm like, oh, man. He goes, I wouldn't do it unless it was really important. We've got to take some time away from you. So, you know, you guys were scheduled to be back here for the next five days or whatever it was. We need you to come back, you know, five days from now Uh-oh. because a big act is coming in. Yeah, I'm like, well, who's the big act? He's like, we've got a non-disclosure. We can't talk about it. Whoa. I'm like, come on. It's, you know, I'm your buddy. He goes, yeah. I'm serious. I can't talk to you about it. Please don't ask. Wow. Like, wow. Turns out that David Bowie was recording his last record. Oh, then. my yeah. God. The next day, we were kicked out of the studio at the Magic Shop for oh. the next day by David Bowie. So it's like, wow. had I known, I would have left voluntarily, right. hands right. down. <laughs> right. So this is a, this is a true story. <laughs> true story. We come back after five days. They were just doing a little pre-production stuff in, in advance of doing the full record. Yeah. We come back, and there was this deli tray sitting there in, in, the, in the main studio. And some, you know, some bananas, and there was some fruit, and there was some Perrier, and there was some, some uh, almonds and things. And, and, and I looked at it, go, and they still couldn't talk about it. No brown. It. They still couldn't right. talk about it. And I said, you know, what's the story with the food? That, I know that's not for us. He goes, you know, go ahead. And so I'm like, so I'm eating. And we're doing our stuff. We're doing our stuff. I'm eating. I mean, wow, this is great stuff. This is great stuff. And then we leave and come back again. And so we find out that it was David Bowie's session. He goes, remember that day that you were eating the deli tray? He goes, you were eating Bowie's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> You so <laughs> I've got the <laughs> distinction. Bucket list? Yeah. Check. Yeah. <laughs> I go, God, they were salty. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit nutty. It's because he's British. They have to put salt on everything up there. It's vinegar, right. really. You know. But wow, I would have, I would have been wow, that's insane. like yeah, was, uh, elated to session. eat David Bowie's nuts that's how I and felt. his meat, <laughs> that, all right. in one. Yeah. All, all Bowie. Yeah, his, de- his, all uh, Bowie. 
his uh, deli meats were, were also very tasty. Bowie even, Charcuterie. That's dying. the name of my now, new band. I have a question. Did yeah. he have any bread, like a small piece of bread or large pieces of bread? There was no any bread, bread there. No bread. There was no bread there. Well, no, good. you see how skinny he was? He can't eat bread. No. Yeah. <laughs> too many carbs. He it was fruit sick. and nuts. And nuts. Yeah. yeah. But nuts. It was a very uh, a, a surreal thing to find out. Because, you know, we had all these questions. And the guy said, he, you know, that he goes, I'm going to give you one hint. The engineer that we used, he goes, because he was on that session too. Yeah. He goes, I'm going to give you one hint. The band hasn't been together for a long time. And that threw me off because I don't view Bowie as a band. Yeah. Right. So we were going down all these roads. And, and for a while there, I thought it was Hole. I thought it was Courtney Love that was in. Huh. That oh, was that's was my right, best yeah. guess. Uh -huh. I go, it's got to be Courtney Love and Hole. And he's like, it's not it. You know, the band hasn't been together for a long time. And so. Uh, he sent us down a rabbit hole. But, you know, you read the information now, and I've read a lot about those sessions at the Magic Shop with Tony Visconti and, and Bowie and uh, Steve Rosenstein, who was the guy that ran Magic Shop. Um, uh, it's, it's, for me, in my personal story, my personal journey about making music and, and recording at great places like the Magic Shop and recording at great places like Pacific Beat here in San Diego, um, that story about being kicked out by David Bowie it, it gives me the chills. It's it really a cake does. topper, you know. It, it really you guys is. open for Bowie. In in a in a weird way it <laughs> is. Yeah. yeah. So you see you know if if you google Bowie, if you were to go home and get on your iPad or your computer and google Bowie Magic Shop Visconti the next day and you see those pictures of Bowie sitting in the control room oh, that's with nuts. the same lava lamps, the same Neve board that we used to make that record. The orange vinyl record. Yeah. It, it really does. And I, I, I know it, it sounds like I'm being a pompous asshole, but it no. really does give me chills that, that we were How cool is you that? Know, in sure. line. Did with any of you guys have the inkling to be like, I'm going to go sneak over there one day. I just want to go you know, stand in the alleyway. You know, I'm going to figure were, this out. They were so good right? about keeping it the secret that it didn't even dawn. Yeah. That, wow. That it, was, uh, it was that big. I mean, when I, did you find out? Like, it was, uh, it was about, I remember reading the Rolling Stone article when the when the record when the next day came out there was a rolling stone article saying you know surprise because bowie kept it under wraps uh -huh. yeah he was you couldn't tell and fripp you know you guys are robert fripp fans i know you guys are fripp was the guy that said you know i'm not supposed to talk about this but i'm working on the new bowie record and bowie went nuts i was like what the fuck are you doing fripp <laughs> when i say don't talk about it that means don't fucking talk about it and that was the and like yeah i know i'm not supposed to talk about it but everybody i'm working on the new bowie record you're gonna be very excited about yeah. this yeah. so the first don't sentence is i know i'm not supposed to talk yeah about it. that's like you know, bowie bam done so the rolling stone ran a story on on the next day and said you know surprise surprise this bowie record came out and, and it was a complete secret and no one knows about it it was recorded at the Magic Shop, and I thought, holy crap. We were there. That was why we were kicked out. And it was really an amazing thing. And then wow. I talked to the engineer, and he confirmed it. Do you feel like that energy carried over into the uh, the next recording sessions with you guys? Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, the Magic Shop uh, is a really, really special place. And I, I, I should say past tense, was a really special place. Is it not there anymore? No. Uh, uh, the, the Wheels of Progress rolled it over, and now it's like a Bloomingdale's. Uh, cosmetic station now. Corporate America. Yeah. Barf. Uh, because, they, you know, uh, Rupert Neve, who yeah. was the British guy that, that built Neve boards, um, Steve, who, who ran the magic shop, bought a Neve board, had it shipped over from the BBC, mm -hmm. and then had a second, he had access to a second Neve board, bought that board. So this is when, when everyone's going Pro Tools and mm -hmm. digital, uh, nobody gives a shit about Neve boards. Right. So, so it. Steve got him at a discount. Then all of a sudden, everyone's going, no, 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 no. Analog's where it's at. Analog, analog. <laughs> Steve has these two Neve boards. Rupert flies from England and and bolts the two boards together <laughs> and makes one master, like, Frankenstein you know, board. Yeah, right. NASA, yeah. <laughs> NASA Frankenstein board. <laughs> and so, uh, I mean, the distinction that, that Magic Shop has is they've got these two amazing Neve boards, and they're... I think there are something like 25 new boards in existence. It's, wow. a, it's a pretty cool thing, and, and Steve had Pretty rare. Them. And if you guys watch the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the Foo Fighters guy, Dave Grohl, yeah, yeah. well, he's got Sonic one. Highways, and uh, there's another one where he goes to the Magic Shop because the, the studio that, that Nirvana made there, that made uh, Smells Like Steve, uh, Teen Spirit mm -hmm. out in Century City or wherever that was, they were closing down and. Grohl buys their Neve board. Yes, I, yeah. I, I saw that. I did too. Grohl buys their Neve yeah, board and says, I'm going to do what I can yeah. to keep, it, right? to keep uh, Sound City alive. He fails. But then he decides that all these studios are failing yeah. because huh. people have laptops now. Oh, yeah. People can do, I mean, there's as much computing power 
in a laptop as there was at Abbey Road in 1969 when the Beatles made the, you know, uh, Abbey Road. Yeah. So, uh, Grohl goes around to six studios in the United States and does an expose on each studio, and one of those studios was the Magic Shop. And Steve, who is a bitter, cranky bastard now because he lost <laughs> his studio, um, hello. There's a whole chapter on on the Magic Shop, and if you guys are out there wow. listening, you should check that out because it's it's important history to the music business. Yeah. Yeah. In Super terms cool. of uh, audio and two now, every, everybody's trying to get the the Neve sound. That's like the the standard for what your your Neve pickups and everything right. now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Neve Neve is he's still out there. He realizes that uh, that analog is tough, but he's building pedals for guitars. He's building plugins for for uh, Pro Tools. Hello. And if oh. I could if I could just add one more story. Um, <laughs> if you only could. I was going to do that. It's right. going to be good. If. Yeah. if. Wait for but it. you know what? It just exited in my brain. Words, I'm down. <laughs> no, I can hear me. There I am. Is that hey, something I'm that's important now. to you I had guys? something really important to say that wasn't really that important. <laughs> <laughs> is, is sound something that's important to you guys as a band? Do you have the specific sound oh, yeah. or tone that oh, you try and get Oh, thank you. Thank you for mentioning that. So you see Rick's T-shirt? That's the Chasing the Sun T-shirt. Yep. There's a song on the album, which is our first record, called... Mm-hmm. Pain, and I want to tell the story about pain revisited. Pain. So uh, that's when it hurts. That's when it hurts. It hurts a lot. It yeah, hurts we a know lot. the definition. Yeah, so that's called. Pain. I thought that was the thing on the window that like you can oh, rest oh, up. Oh, that's that's a oh, P-A-N. that's, a, that's P A N. Yeah. Good one. But um, I can't, and I can't stand the pain. That's for anybody <laughs> shallow so that doesn't know the know, real meaning. Of if you have to peeling, clean that's me. Hey, hey, you read me right? like a book. Lead paint. That's, not <laughs> that's good. a problem. But we had reason to revisit uh, just a couple weeks ago the song "Pain" from our first record, and uh, this is a song that we recorded at the Magic Shop in New York City, and we have the uh, the tracks all on hard drive. We went back down to Pacific Beat here in San Diego with the hard drive and loaded them into the studio here and gradually brought up the tracks. So this, these are tracks that were recorded at Magic Shop that we're now revisiting in San Diego. And this is just two weeks ago. This is a remix project that we were undertaking recently. And Alan Sanderson, our producer engineer here in San Diego, um, loads the tracks up. And you, you, know, you generally start with drums. So he rolls up the kick drum on this track and then rolls up the snare and it's But you're a big <laughs> making big noise. <laughs> but magic right? shop sound. That's a different sound. <laughs> magic shop. <laughs> it's magic shop sound. And you can hear. Yeah. You can hear New York. in those two tracks, the kick drum and the snare drum, you could hear the magic shop. And I hadn't heard that since t- 2012. When wow, we it's like the that. ghost of the magic shop. Yeah. <laughs> Some rooms are like and, that. And I know that sounds bizarre and maybe a little bit egotistical, but as you f- as you rolled up those faders, it was the room. Wow, isn't that It nice? was the room, and, and that too and the gives board. me freaking chills. The room makes and that Rupert the it, sound. The in, a, a, mm-hmm. in most cases, yeah. I don't think a lot of people give the room enough credit. That's really oh, true. It it is sound true. City, LA. Mm-hmm. That's really. It's true. like the yeah, uh, the yeah. Gold Star. Echo chamber. Yeah, but it is iconic. a high fidelity thing. It's yeah, it's absolutely. If you listen thing. to that record, you're going to be amazed at the quality of that. Yeah, this is, cr- yeah. This is a crusty thing. Mm-hmm. All the way. <laughs> 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 Trying to keep it real, you know. We got to live out by our reputation. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's real. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. Yeah. You know, so, uh, so anyway, um, Pain, you added a bunch of stuff to it. So yeah, we uh, we're not the kind of band that likes to look in the rearview mirror, but uh, we had. Uh, Especially when someone's walking away slow. Whoa. Thanks. Slow wow, slow wow. Paul's on. <laughs> I can feel Paul's on. <laughs> I'm going with a more of a Tommy Newsom approach these days. So I'll back off. But we yeah, we had uh, we had the opportunity to revisit this track and uh, add some stuff to it, and it sounded great. And uh, but the, the thing that was cool for me was to be able to go back in time to 2012 and, and to hear the drum sounds in their naked glory coming through that knee board. So you got some six year old audio you're bringing back, yeah. and, and starting. And we did sort of a remix, you know, know not yeah for the purposes of, of remixing the entire record, but with this one song, uh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, it, cool. was, it was fun. We're going on a bunch of new songs right now. Really? Yeah. Hey when, now. You, when you guys are writing, uh, do you contribute all together as a band, or is there more of a, a lead? We don't have a, a, a particular roadmap. I mean, the, the new single, Swimming Horses, is, is a group effort, and yeah. uh, you know everybody contributed to that in equal, in equal measure. And that's, uh, but it could be, 
someone's idea. It could be someone else's idea. It could be two people working together. It could be any any number of ways. There's no ego involved with this stuff. What are your influences when you're writing? Uh, that's a, that's a great question. That's a great question because you know I, you know the people that I listen to, the people that I, I enjoy, talk about shutting their mind off to the outside, mm-hmm. and I know I don't know if that's possible. I think really theoretically, it's possible, but you know, you, you <laughs> yeah. hear stories about you know I'm going to start writing for the new record. I'm not going to listen to anybody because I don't want the, that stuff to seep in. And but the song the that we're talking song. about, uh, the song Pain, has a real Dear Prudence vibe to it. And if people listen to it, they're going, yeah, you know, I can hear sort of a psychedelic, beatly thing going on there, and it lends itself to that. But you know, I certainly was not listening to Dear Prudence when I wrote that song. But yeah. Right. The Beatles, frankly, are part of my fabric, and it's going to be in there. But uh, yeah. listening to a lot of, uh, I don't know, uh, you know, Ryan Adams, for instance. Not to be confused with Brian Adams, <laughs> but, you know, who I'm, I have a disdain for, but Ryan Adams, who I, I consider a, a hero of mine. You've been warned, Brian. <laughs> yeah. Don't come here. I'm coming Stay for you. Stay in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> summer of 69 this, you motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> There's no summer in Canada. That's right. <laughs> It's the winter of 69. <laughs> anyway, I mean... I don't think he was talking about a year. I also was listening to someone talk about... Um, you said that. I'll, I'll, the, do, this, I'll the, do it for a year. The <laughs> self-inflicted pain that some some writers will put themselves through. They'll, they'll, they'll intentionally cause strife in their lives to give them something to write about. Like they're, they're it's drama like the blues, right? They're you can't drama really write the blues unless you feel right. blues or no one's going to feel I, it either. I, yeah, and I, I hear that. I get that. Um, you know, I think that we're probably more observational in our writing than first person. I mean, I don't you know. Yeah. I'm not going to slip my wrist to say, oh, man, I had this horrible day. I'm going to write about how much pain <laughs> I'm in. Um, right. I also think that, that uh, you spend a certain amount of time writing the same song. You're in the quest for the, for the ultimate song. I don't know if you ever get there. So you have, the, you know, in my mind, I know that I've got a vision of what the ultimate song is. And I, I think I'm... You know, or, or we are on that pursuit of, of writing, and I think you you fall into or may fall into the trap of trying to write the, that song, and uh, yeah, yeah, so let it kind of let it flow and develop, you know. Yeah, but you know, you, gosh, I mean, how many times have you sat down and said, you know, I've got these great chords and I've got uh-huh. a concept for you know subject matter, and you lay it down, and you know, I do a lot of singing into my uh, my notes, my iTunes notes thing, and. And you wake up Why the next studios day. studios are dying. I'm right. you. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, you shouldn't have charged, you know, $500 an hour. Uh-huh. Right? And I'd still be doing business with you. Know, then you wake up the next day and you go, holy shit, this is drivel. You know, it's like, this is, this is just awful. But it's brutal that it costs so much to go into the studios, and yet when you try and play at a local place, they don't pay you anything either. Right. Like, how am it's I a real, It's a real problem. Yeah. And if you listen to guys like David Byrne, uh, they, they theorize that, that – the, the, the notion of people wanting to play music as a, as a vocation, as an occupation, is ending because you literally cannot make any money well, playing these guitar. Days, yeah, you're you're the flavor of the week now. By the time your two weeks is up, they're on to the new next best thing. Yeah. Also, as uh, fans out there of music and bands and stuff, you know, you got to support by downloading and buying albums because that's what actually right. feeds an artist. Right. And these days with streaming and stuff like that, you know, Everyone you're a quarter that. of a cent per play. It doesn't have the same effect. Yeah. It's diluted I mean, a little bit. I mean, we, we've, 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 uh, we've experienced 11,000 spins of not our recent single, but the single before that. So on Spotify, it's been spun 11,000 times. And to give you an idea, I mean, that's very impressive, right? But that's that's about two hundred and fifty dollars. So it's just, you know, the economics of being a musician. I mean, I I'm not going to speak for you guys, but you do it because you love music. You, know? yeah. you yep. don't do it because you're going to buy a house. Or, right? <laughs> right. It's right. a vacation, it's, not a vocation, right? That's right. Yeah. And we, we played at a at a, a very nice place last week, uh, the Imperial House down in San Diego, down by Balboa Park. And Huge. I love we're it. hanging out with uh, some of the folks that were there. And uh, you know they were very nice to us. We sort of interrupted their dinner as we <laughs> as we were sound checking, and I, I said, you know, can we give you some music? Yeah. You know, we'd like for you to be fans of ours. And I handed them compact discs, and I said, yeah. do you know what a compact disc is? And they're like, God, we don't we don't, we don't, li- we don't listen to compact discs, you know. She goes, I think I have a compact disc player in my car. Yeah. But you know, I mean, it's one of those things. I mean. I, yeah. 
much less albums. Isn't it crazy? Or, it is. And I love it because I and I love it. A lot of bands aren't, aren't even producing discs anymore because everybody streams it or just buys it. Uh, or downloads thumb drives. It. That's right. Mm-hmm. Thumb drives. Yeah. yeah, that's one. Thumb drives. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I airdrop. Love I love a CD. I and love a CD. Though, it depends personally. on your market too. Your target market. Yeah. You know, a lot of a lot of the uh, older fans won't know what to do with a thumb drive. Right. True. Right. True uh, that. That's why having vinyl is good, you know? Vinyl sales are on the up, but vinyl because it's more up. of a nostalgic thing. It is. Not everyone even has a, well, yeah, a turntable. Think about it. I mean, just, just expensive to I'm, produce. I'm, I'm asking sort of, uh, you know, rhetorically, do you have time in your personal lives to sit down, pour yourself a cocktail, put on some that music, part, yeah. and sit there for an cocktail? hour? Cocktail? Yeah. yeah. For the cocktail part works. <laughs> yeah. But do you, do you have an hour in your day to sit there and listen to a full record? No. Unless People I'm don't driving, do that anymore. Or driving, or driving, 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 or driving, if I'm driving just in traffic. Doing something and I can or, listen. Or they add it to their playlist and you get through it, That's not in order, but you know, on shuffle. Right. So it doesn't have the same impact. Right. Yeah. It's I true. was uh, I was in the grocery store. This is a couple of years back, and this is in a previous life. This is pre Oliver James. But I'm in the grocery store and I'm looking for tortellini, and on comes a song of mine. On the Vaughn's in-house system, yeah. That's really freaking cool. Yeah, and that was. Where's my check, bitches? That's how you know you've made it. (laughs) That's really bizarre. I'm like, I'm in the lunch meat section, and I'm rocking mightily to it. So, my wife, my wife was in her car the other day, and Swimming Horses came on, streaming in Tesla. Tesla streaming channel, it's got it on. There you go. So, I mean, but yeah, you know, it's it's literally for each stream. Is sub pennies? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Isn't it like a point? And oh, and we get a we get a report every month that says this is who this this is who's streaming it and this is where it's at and this is where the information is. But uh, you know, I, I don't know who's designed the economics of it, but it's not in the artist's favor. No, it's not. Now, are they working on changing that? Actually, Dirty, have you heard anything about that? That they're they're revamping how how the artists get, are getting paid. It's through it's those been constantly in. Uh, been trying to change like the music industry is working on it very hard but it's it's difficult <laughs> they don't want to talk about that, that ASCAP hard, things? right yeah oh, okay yeah it's a it's a weird world out there i mean and i you know frankly the record com- the record industry only has itself to blame yeah, yeah. oh yeah it okay. included itself. really screwed the pooch on that one yeah, yeah. They did. and they didn't it's a- all touring, a- adapt touring to artists. yeah I mean, if, if you're not if you're not selling tickets to shows you know, you're, you're struggling. Well, now you're selling $40 t-shirts at shows, too. <laughs> well, for you, $50. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> God, he told me 25 <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Do, you, do you have any live gigs coming up? Uh, what do we got coming up? Do we have anything coming up? I don't know that we do. We've got a We're couple of things. We're working on several bookings right now, yeah. but they're not solid yet. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a struggle. It's going to happen. Cool. It's a struggle. Yeah, it's have a you done time. any touring? We have not. No. You know, we're, 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 a, we're a regional uh, phenomenon. Mm-hmm. But they do have tracks that have touched both coasts. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And intergalactically. They're, they're coast to coast. Chasing the sun, as it were. As it were. Yeah. Yeah. Very nicely done. Mm-hmm. Hey. But it's going to break. Very it's very good at the break out. <laughs> it's got legs. No, we, uh, we're, we're thrilled with we, uh, the trajectory of our, of our organization. And, and you know, I'm thrilled to have these guys mm-hmm. on, my, uh, on my side. And it's, it's been a blast. Mm-hmm. We're certainly thrilled to have you guys out here. Yeah, on the you sounded great Thank today. You. Thank you Thank for you playing so here at the, uh, the 30th anniversary here at the Heritage Ranch in San Diego. Yes. Yes. It's awesome. awesome. It's the 30th birthday. It's the Dirty 30. Oh. Come on out and party. Wow. It's almost as old as <laughs> I am. <laughs> <laughs> almost. Never would have guessed that. I was like, did your uh, mom have to sign the waiver? <laughs> yeah. I do have a right. stage age. <laughs> yeah. I did see there was somebody hovering over them like, you know, it's like they do with the minors. Almost half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you cool. Dusty Futon folks, thanks for having us. Thank you. Oh, it's absolutely. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Oh, thanks and, for coming uh, over and chatting with you us. Guys anytime uh, we can, we can uh, co-promote anything or if you uh, want to do something sure. with us, let us know. Yeah, appreciate Definitely. what you guys are doing in the industry, too. Keep up the good work. Yeah, thanks, thank man. You. Mm-hmm. Thank you. We're fighting the good fight together. That's Woo! right. That's right. right. Yes, we are. We're in this together. Totally. Awesome. Mm-hmm. We're just, right. yeah, different roles. Let's make music <laughs> great again. <laughs> cool. That's right. Yes, make music great yes, again. Make music great Don't be afraid to do it the hard way. my hat. I like it the hard way. Yeah. Hey! hey. 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 Spicy hey. give. Where's that rim shot when we need it? <laughs> <laughs> See, maybe you should have woke up from your nap. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Oh, yeah, we're not going anywhere for a while. Yeah, so cool.